This is our first Math Counts Mini of the Year, and I know what you're thinking when you look at this. You're thinking, I came here for a math competition, not an English competition. Well, that's what we're going to talk about. There's a lot of math up in here, but we have to turn all these words into that math first. Of course, first we have to read all these words before we can turn them into math. We have a streaming video service that offers two plans. First has a $24 registration fee, fixed monthly rate of 5 bucks, and they charge you 75 cents for each video download. They're really nickel and diming us. Second plan has $15 registration fee, $3 monthly rate, and a buck 50 per download. And we're looking for how many downloads the two plans will cost the same over a full year. I need to turn all these words into an equation. I need a variable for that equation. I'm going to go ahead and focus on what I'm looking for, because I don't really see a better choice for the variable. I'm going to let x be the number of downloads over that year. Now, I want to build an equation for x. I could try to build that right out of all these words, but I'm going to get a little bit more organized than that, because I might mess up if I just try to read all these words and turn it into an equation. I'm going to organize all these numbers up here and hope I can build an equation out of it. Now, each of these plans has three types of fees. There's a registration fee, there's a monthly fee, and there's a download fee. I'm going to build a nice little table here, organize all these fees, and hopefully I'll be able to just read my equation right off of that. So I'm going to have one column for each one of the plans. Well, first, our registration fee is $24 for the first plan, $15 for the second. And there's the monthly fee. Now, I have to be careful here. Always read the question very carefully. We're looking for how many downloads the two are the same for a year. I care about a whole year. So I have to take this monthly number, multiply by 12. So that monthly fee is going to be $60 over the whole year for the first plan. And 3 times 12 gives us 36 for the second plan. And then the download rate was $0.75 cents per download. 0.75x for the first plan, the second plan is a buck fifty per download. Now I have all my information in a nice pretty table like this. We can build our equation. We know that the whole fee, we just add these up to get the whole fee for the first plan, add these up to get the whole fee for the second plan, and we want these two to be the same. So when I add this column up, I get 84 plus 0.75x. And that has to equal what I get when I add these three, which is 51 plus 1.5x. Now that I have my equation, we can solve for x. Subtract 51 from both sides. Subtract 0.75x from both sides. We'll have 33 equals 0.75x. Now I'm going to jump from decimals over to fractions. I don't want to divide by 0.75. I'm perfectly happy, though, to write this as 3 fourths x and multiply both sides by 4 thirds. And I'll get x is 33 times 4 thirds, which gives us 44 downloads for the whole year. And last step, always read the question one more time. For how many downloads would the two plans cost the same for a full year of service? That How many downloads? That's x. x is what I found. The answer is 44. On to the next problem. And you guessed it, more words. And this time we're describing a geometric situation. We're going to draw a picture, or a couple pictures, to organize our information. Now, the length of a rectangle is three times its width. So we're going to start off just with that. We can draw a rectangle. And instead of assigning a variable to the length and another variable to the width, I can just take this sentence and say the width is w. Width is w. And the length is three times that, three times w. All right, and then we're going to build a new rectangle. New rectangle is created by decreasing the length of the original rectangle by 9 feet and then increasing its width by 4 feet. So we're going to have a new rectangle. And it's new. the new length decreased the length by 9 feet. We're going to take that earlier length of 3w and turn that into 3w minus 9. Increase the width by 4 feet. We're just going to turn this side into w plus 4. And we're told the area of the new rectangle is the same as the area of the original rectangle. That gives us our equation. The areas of these two have, has to be the same. Multiply these two to get the area of the rectangle, the original rectangle. That gives us 3w squared. And we multiply these two 
to get the area of the new rectangle, 3w minus 9 times w plus 4. Now we have an equation we can try to solve for w. Well, this side's pretty straightforward. It's just 3w squared. Over here, we're going to have to use the distributive property, multiply this out. 3w times w gives us another 3w squared, which is really convenient because these two will cancel out. 3w times the plus 4 gives us a plus 12w. Minus 9 times w, that gives us a minus 9w. Minus 9 times plus 4 gives us a minus 36. Now we subtract 3w squared from both sides. It's going to leave us a 0 over here, and the w squared is gone. 12w minus 9w gives us 3w minus 36. Add 36 to both sides, divide by 3, and we see that w is 12. Now it's very tempting to take that 12, write it down as the answer, and move on. But again, last step, what is the perimeter of the new rectangle? That perimeter isn't w. w is the width of the original rectangle. So we're going to go back to our pictures to answer the question. Always read the question again at the end. We'll take this 12, put it in here. 3 times 12 is 36, minus 9. Gives us a length here of 27. Put the 12 in here. 12 plus 4 gives us a width here of 16. So this perimeter, I take my length and my width, I add those two, 27 plus 16, that gives me 43. And I double it, because there's another width and length over here, and I get a perimeter of 86 feet. And I save myself by making sure I answered the question. We're on to one more, one more word problem here. You knew there was going to be some more words. At least this one's a little bit shorter. Read the question. We have a restaurant selling three sizes of drinks. Buck 20 for the smalls. Buck 30 for the mediums. Buck 80 for the larges. We have a table of 10. Each one orders one drink. Total cost is $14.90. So you can see where our equation is going to come, up, come from. We're just going to add up the costs of what everybody buys here. Get $14.90. We need some variables. I'll we'll go ahead and say S for the small. M for the medium, and I'm going to use G for large. I'm not going to use L because L looks like 1. Be careful. Choose sensible variables. And again, keep our eyes on what we're trying to figure out here. How many people ordered a large drink? That means we're looking for G. That's the one we really want. Now let's build an equation. We can build an equation with this total cost. The S people who ordered smalls, that costs buck twenty for each of those S drinks. That's a total of 1.2 S for all the smalls. The buck 30 for the mediums, that's 1.3 M for all the mediums. Buck 80 for the largest gives us 1.8 times G for all the largest. And we add that all up, we get 1490. Oh, stuck. I got one equation here. I have three variables, and I don't want to just start guessing and sticking numbers in. That might take forever. What can we do? When I get stuck in a problem, I always like to look back at the problem for information I haven't used yet. What information haven't I used here? Well, I've used the price of each size. I've used the total price. But I haven't used this right here. I haven't used that 10 that's sitting there. Well, that 10 gives me another equation. I have S order small, M order medium, G orders large. That gives me a second equation. I add these three, I'm going to get 10. So now I have a second equation, I can at least, well, I can eliminate one of these variables. I'm going to go ahead and eliminate the first, I'm going to eliminate the S. I'm going to multiply this equation by 1.2. And I'll have a new equation. This equation I can subtract from the first equation, and the S's will cancel. That will leave me 0.1M. So 0.6g is 2.9. Wait a second. I could have jumped straight to this. Check this out. Check this out. Imagine those 10 people came in and they all just ordered smalls. That's all they do. They just come in and they order smalls. Well, it's a buck 20 per small. So those 10 people ordering all those smalls, that's $12. That's this equation right here. This is what happens if they all order smalls. But we know that the total cost is $14.90, so there must have been some mediums and larges. Well, let's think about what happens as we replace each of these smalls with one of these other drinks. I replace a small with a medium. Price goes from $120 to $130. So each time I swap a small for a medium, that's 10 more cents. 
each of the mediums cost 10 more cents. Then each time I take one of these small, swap it out for a large, we're going to go from a buck 20 up to a buck 80. That's 60 more cents. Each of the additional larges costs us another 60 cents. So I take all that extra money, and that's got to equal that gap between all smalls and what they actually paid. That's the 290. So now I could have gone straight to this equation without even doing all that. It's nice, still doesn't give me the answer, though. Now what? Stuck again. Go back to the problem. What information haven't we used? What do we know about M and G that we haven't even thought about yet? Uh, well, what could M be? Can M be, can M be 50? Well, no, M can't be 50 because M can't be more than 10. There are only 10 people. So that's one restriction we have right away. M and G, they can't be any higher than 10. Uh, they can't be negative either. They can't have negative number of people ordering medium drinks, and they can't be fractions. They can't be half. They can't be a third. They have to be integers. So we know that these are non-negative integers somewhere from 0 to 10. Well, that's not too many options. I'm going to focus on G over here. See, what, what could G be? Now, if I put in G, if I put in 10 for G, that makes this 6. 0.1M plus 6 equals 2.9. That's going to make M negative. That's no good. So I'm going to have to come down from 10. Now, if I come down to 5, if I put 5 in there, I'm going to 0.1M plus 3. I'm still going to have to be negative. But if I go down one more to G equals 4, what happens? So we know that G can't be 5. Let's try 4. When G is 4, I get 0.1m plus 2.4 equals 2.9. So m can be 5. m is 5, g is 4, s can be 1. That works out really nicely. Now, just to be sure we didn't make a mistake here, what happens if g is 3? If g is 3, well, I have 1.8 there. It's going to force m to be 11. That's too high. And the same thing keeps happening as you make g lower and lower. So g equals 4 works, and none of the others do. Last step, last step, go back and read the problem. How many people ordered a large drink? We wanted G, we found G. G is 4, and we're done.